Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on Try and Hack Me. Today we're going to be going over task 41, AV Evasion Enumeration. We have, or we have a reverse shell on the third and final target. This is cause for celebration. Let's actually see if we scroll up. Um, and I probably need to add a little bit of time left. Nope, it didn't update quite yet. Uh, we probably, uh, I think that's when we have full compromise. We don't ha yet have full system access to the target though. As we saw when we first obtained the web shell, the web shell was unfortunately or fortunately not running with system permissions, contrary to XAMPP defaults, which leaves us with a low privilege account. Looks like Thomas was sensible with his security on his own PC. This does mean that we're going to need to enumerate the target for privs vectors though, and with Defender active, we'll have to do it quietly. Let's consider our options. We could and should always start with a little manual enumeration. This will be relatively quiet and gives us a baseline to work with. Defender will definitely catch a regular copy of WinPs. However, it would be unlikely to catch either the .bat version or the obfuscated.exe version, both of which are released in the Ps repository alongside the regular version. Chances are that AMSI will alert Defender if we try to upload any PowerShell privS scripts. Uh, so for example, pro, uh, power up. So we'd ideally be looking for obfuscated versions of these if we were to use them. We'll start with some manual exploit or enumeration and hopefully come up with something workable. Use the command who am I forward slash priv. So we can do who am I forward slash priv and we can see we have some privileges. One of the privileges on this list is very famous for being used in the print spoofer and potato series of privilege escalation exploits. Which privilege is this? So this should be the SE impersonate privilege. Uh, this is a wonderful family of exploits that I highly recommend playing around with. Uh, they are just a recent, uh, as of the time of recording, a series of issues in Windows that uh, just haven't really been handled properly, leading to a large number of exploits, uh, making privilege escalation on Windows very fun right now. Our current user likely has this privilege due to running the XAMPP service, or XAMPP as a service on the account. Unfortunately, this also means that XAMPP won't be a good privS vector in its own right, but we might be able to use the privileges it gave us. Now use the who am I slash groups to check the current user's groups. And we can do that here, am I, or who am I forward slash groups. Unfortunately, this account isn't in the local administrators group, which is a good thing to check uh, usually uh, right away, uh, as that combined with high integrity or the high integrity process we're currently using would make any further privilege escalation redundant. Mark that as completed. Now that we've got an idea of our own uh, user's capabilities, let's take a look at the box itself. Windows services are commonly vulnerable to various attacks, so we'll start there. Generally speaking, it's unlikely that core Windows services will be vulnerable to anything. Uh, user installed services, however, are far more likely to have holes in them. Let's start by looking for non-default services. Um, and we can do that by copying this command over here, and we'll run it over here. And we'll go ahead and let it do its thing. This lists all of the services running on the system. And you can see it over here, it's a little bit choppy just because of the size of the terminal, then filters it uh, so that only the services that are not in C colon Windows or in the C colon Windows directory are returned. This should cut out most of the core Windows services, which are unlikely to be vulnerable to this kind of vulnerability, leaving us with the primarily uh, lesser known user installed services. There should be a bunch of results returned here read through them, paying particular attention to the path name column. So right here, uh, we can see that we have one down here that is the Explore Help Service. Let's see. Uh, let's take a look at this real quick before we dive in. What is the name, uh, second column from the far left of this service? I uh, noticed one of the paths does have quotation marks around it. Uh, so it is gonna be this one. So it is the, I believe, M Explorer Help Service. Let's see if that, goes here one sec i probably have grabbed the wrong column here one sec let me go ahead and jump over here there we go it's this one system explorer service just because it's butchered um and there we go system explorer help service so it is actually wrapped around here. That's what we want. 
The lack of quotation marks around the service path indicates that it might be vulnerable to an unquoted service path attack. In short, if any of the directories in the path contain spaces, which several do as you can see, a lot of spaces, uh, and are writable, which we are about to check, then, assuming the service is running as NT authority system account, uh, we might be able to escalate or elevate our privileges. First of all, let's check to see which account the service runs under. Under uh, By using this command, sqc, so we're querying the service, um, and this specific service name is the system explorer help service. And we can see that sure enough, it is running as local system. Uh, is the service running as the local system account? Yes, it is. Wonderful. This is looking good. Uh, let's check the permissions on this directory. If we can write to it, we are golden. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab this command. If I can grab the last quote. And if we paste it here, we can see if we can actually write to it. And sure enough, if we take a look up here at uh, built-in users, allow uh, full control. That's not good. <laughs> so we can write to that directory. So we have full control over this directory. How strange, but hey, Thomas's security oversight will allow us to root this target. We'll go ahead and mark that as completed. In the interest of learning, it should be noted here that this is far from the only vulnerability here. By the looks of it, Thomas installed the program, but couldn't be bothered entering the password for the administrator account every time he needed to react with it. As a result, he botched the permissions and gave every user access to every aspect of the program. This means that we can create our unquoted service path exploit, uh, but we could also perform attacks such as DLL hijacking or even outright replacing the service executable with a malicious binary. Uh, that's a little bit more destructive. Typically, you want to avoid this just because you will get caught if uh, suddenly a program that someone is using on that computer just stops working. That said, we will stick to the unquoted service path vulnerability purely to avoid messing with the service itself. This way, all we need to do, or all we need to do is create our own binary, then delete it, rather than alter any of the files in the service itself. So bonus question, optional, try to get a copy of WinPs up to the target. Um, in this specific case, I'm going to bypass that. For now, since we've done our manual enumeration, this is something I do recommend you guys play with just for additional practice though. Otherwise, that is going to do it for this video. I will see you guys next time when we go over task 42. But until then, happy hacking!